the second battalion of the seventh cav uh, was notified in the afternoon of x-ray start 14 november uh, to stand by to fly in and reinforce then colonel moore's battalion and uh, our b company flew in that night and uh, helped him fight off the first morning's attack uh, my company uh, was standing by at a landing zone about five miles away and uh, we were told that the landing zone was too hot to, to assault and would have to sit around and wait for a while. So we waited for about an hour and then went in on three lifts when there was a uh, respite of about 20 seconds at LZ X-ray. And when we landed, uh, we lost our third platoon almost immediately, went to plug in a gap in the perimeter. Uh, for, fortunately, we, we got there after the really bad part of the morning of the 15th, but we did serve. Uh, we served there for two or th two more days, uh, plugged holes, patrolled, saw three more enemy attacks. Uh, we knew we'd been in, in a fight, but not with the first of the seventh who'd taken the brunt of the fighting. On the morning of the 17th, uh, missing our B company, which had flown out with Colonel Moore's battalion for a rest after a victory. Uh, the second of the seventh, reinforced by a company from the first to the fifth, marched out of LZ X-ray with uh, orders to go to Albany about three clicks north. That's three, three, three miles about. And being good rangers uh, and cab guys and infantrymen, we took the circuitous route where they wouldn't know where we were and we walked five or six miles to get there. Uh, we arrived uh, in the heat of about 110, 102 degrees. Everybody is tired because we've been awake for three days at X-ray. And, uh, and what we didn't know was that waiting for some orders from headquarters was a battalion of North Vietnamese regulars well rested and uh, waiting to get into the fight. We captured two of them about a hundred yards, we were heading east to west. We captured two of them about a hundred yards this side of Elsey, Albany, and saw that they were hardcore Pavan. They were well armed, uh, well trained. It appeared uh, definitely North Vietnamese regulars. And this was new at, at that stage of the Vietnam War. We hadn't run into large units of the North Vietnamese. Uh, Unfortunately, they had three guys with them and they had f run back to their battalion commander and said, the Americans are coming from this direction. And he gave orders to set up a hasty ambush. Uh, I've learned subsequently since the book, uh, We Were Soldiers Once and Young came out, that that battalion was reinforced by a heavy weapons unit and numbered about 550 men. Uh, after X-ray, we walked into Albany with about 350 men. We walked right into Albany and they attacked. Another battalion had come up from the X-ray vicinity and they had 450 men. And there was another unit that came down from Play Me with the North Vietnamese and they had about 150, 200 men. So our historians, since we were soldiers once and young, was published indicate that we, 350 to 400 guys, were up against a force of 1,200 North Vietnamese who'd had the jump on us and, and surprised us. Notwithstanding that, after suffering 50% casualties, probably within the first two hours of close combat, we were able to form two perimeters, one at the front at Albany and one back with the first and the fifth near LZ Columbus and fought off from those two perimeters uh, repeated attacks by the overwhelming number of North Vietnamese. Uh, we had great help from Navy and Air Force SPAD A1Es that dropped napalm all around our position at Albany. And at the end of uh, five, four or five hours of close combat, uh, we were getting tired and running out of ammunition and things did not look well for us. I know my company had lost half its people the first half hour. 
two out of four platoons have been totally overrun. Um, C Company behind us had 110 guys when they walked into Albany, and at the end of two days of fighting, there were only nine of them reporting for duty. So it was a heck of a fight. Um, around four or five o'clock, we got word that uh, there was a unit, B Company 2nd and 7th, that was going to fly into LZ Albany and help us out. And Myron de Dork leading 80 guys from B Company and Rick Rescorla as his number two guy, they performed one of the most courageous helicopter air assaults I've ever seen flying into this maelstrom of enemy fire, shooting to the left and exiting the helicopters to the right and coming into our perimeter to save us. I'll never forget that. Then it got to be about dusk and the battle was pretty much over, except for small pockets of Americans who were lying in the jungle, in the high grass, uh, wounded and trying to band together and defend themselves from roaming groups of North Vietnamese soldiers. I was tired by that time, so I took a rest and fell asleep. <laughs> in the morning I woke up and they had not attacked. We had a mad minute and the next two days, we went out and policed up our wounded and our dead. We packed up hundreds of enemy, enemy weapons that had been left on the field. Uh, at the end of it all, I think uh, we had certainly given better than we got, and we killed an awful lot of the enemy in those days. And we suffered 155 killed out of our 350 and 124 wounded out of are 350, so it was close to 70% casualties. But I'd like to say to my comrades on the panel and anybody out there listening, uh, the second of the seventh did one hell of a job at LZ Albany. And I thank Hal and Joe, General Moore and Joe Galloway for publishing the story for the first time in their first book mentioning it again in their new book, and making a movie about their fight, which was almost as exciting as ours. <laughs> <laughs>